Hello and welcome to the Clever Fox YouTube channel. My name is Elise and today's video is all about goal setting. I am going to share with you how to take a big goal and break it down into little steps using the Clever Fox Weekly Planner Pro. We are going to talk about how to do a mind map, a brain dump, incorporate your goal into a monthly layout and a weekly layout and a bunch of other fun ideas in terms of using this planner to help you set achieve and maintain goals. So make sure that you watch until the end so you don't miss any of our tips and tricks and you subscribe to our channel so that you get notified when we post a new video. Let's get started. So today we are going to focus on one goal and talk about how we can use our planner to break it down. So I have a ribbon here with this section for one-year goals. And I love how these one-year goals are categorized into health and fitness, business and career, family and friends, relationships and romance, finance, personal development, fun and recreation, and spiritual. Today, we are going to talk about a health and fitness goal. So I don't know about you, but after two plus years of working remote, I feel very stagnant. I do a couple of hundred steps a day. Maybe I'm not moving around. Last summer, I was good about um, exercising a little bit, but not nearly enough. And I think that it's really easy to just run into my kitchen and grab snacks instead of healthy food. And I notice that when there's a day that I do need to be more active, I tire out easily. And I'm 35. I shouldn't tire out as easily as I am, I feel like, when uh, my nephew wants to run around the yard with me. I don't have as much energy to. Even after a long day of shopping with my mom, the next day my feet hurt. Part of that might be not wearing the right shoes. Can't wear flip-flops for a day at the mall. I want to focus on my health and become more fit and also eat healthier. Why I want it so I can live a long, healthy life. I don't want to be in my 60s with health problems that I could have resolved in my 30s. And just so that I have more energy in general, I think that having being sluggish throughout the day, a lot of this can be handled with diet and exercise. It's a great idea to focus on my health, eat healthier, exercise more, but how do I incorporate it into my planner? So let's shift over to the mind map. This mind map page is really great for looking at your three month goals and breaking them down. But one of the great things about this planner, of course, is the back has so many of these dot grid pages. So you could do a mind map for each of your goals if you wanted to. But we're just gonna start and kind of, the mind map is going to sort of be more of a brain dump of ideas on things that we can do. So let's just put a nice, fun, big circle in there. And the goal, let's get healthy. So before you incorporate your goals into your planner, you need to figure out what they're going, how you're going to, because again, breaking them down into really small steps is vital. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's draw a line up here and let's focus on exercise. And then there's a couple of different things you need. First of all, do I have exercise clothing? That might seem like a silly thing, but do I have the clothing for it? Um, do I have the means for it. And when I say means, I mean, do I want to join a gym? Do I want to <clears throat> exercise and run around my apartment complex? Do I have a basement gym? No, I don't. Maybe you do, maybe you have exercise equipment already. And so that means part is taken care of, but just deciding on the method. And then um, let's put in here, entertainment. The reason I rate that is Last summer, when I decided that I didn't finish this goal, so we're, we're going to focus on it again this summer, but I decided that I was going to run a 5K. I've never been a good runner, and I decided I wanted to become one. One of the things I learned really quickly was that I can run much e more easily or I enjoy it more when I have music to listen to, or maybe you want to walk and listen to an audiobook or a podcast or just something to keep you company so you're not just in your head and there's something really good and motivating. So it might be making sure you have headphones or downloading a Spotify app or something like that. Um, then let's look at diet. So diet is going to be uh, water. I should have left space to write water intake, but we're just gonna stick with water. Recipes, 
If I want to be cooking, part of that means learning healthy recipes and understanding what healthy means for my body because we all have different ones and some of us need more protein and things like that. Um, water, recipes, habits. I want to bring habits into here as well. Let's put it over here. Oops. Okay, so those will be the three things when it comes to focusing on those. Then, then I'm going to make a list down here or two lists of the things that need to get done. So let's do a little line here and a little line here. And we are going to write exercise and diet. So exercise, when I look over here, so we're gonna make some bullets. And the benefit of this is that once it comes down to bringing these into your planner, you'll know exactly the steps you need to take rather than looking at just the goal of get fit and figure out how to put how to put that into plans. So first of all, habits. Um, let's write, use a different pen. Let's write at least three times per week, which amounts to every day. And I think it's good. Clothing, try on sneakers, go through closet. So you wanna make sure that you have the right gear. I'm not saying spend a ton of money on it, but making sure that uh, for me, I would need, it's summer, so I would need a tank top, I would need a good sports bra, need sneakers, comfortable socks, and that's probably enough for me. The means is going to be, um, for me, it's going to be walk, run, combo, with the actual means being this app, it's called C25K and it stands for Couch to 5K. And it's, I believe a 30 or 45 day exercise program where for 30 minutes a day, you'll do a combination of walk, jog, run, and it'll notify you on the app when it's time to do each. So having a set program is really helpful when it comes to exercise, of course, you should always consult with your doctor or healthcare professional before starting any exercise program to make sure that it is right for you. Um, entertainment. I don't actually have a music app on my phone, so I'm going to want to <laughs> download um, Spotify. And then another thing is I'm gonna write exercise basket. When there's a goal of things or when you have a goal of something that you want to do, having everything in one space is really helpful. So if by my door or in my bedroom, I put a basket of my exercise clothing, um, my headphones, well, I'm not going to put my phone in there, but everything that I need so that when I am waking up early in the morning to complete this habit or something, I will know that everything is right there and I'm not running around my apartment looking for it. I also have um, what is it called? Find arm case. I purchased last year a thing that goes on your arm to hold your phone so that my phone's not in my pocket, like bouncing around as I'm moving. So find arm case. And final step would be sign up for a 5K. And the fall would be a great time to do it. And actually signing up for one and knowing that it has to be completed because I'm going to actually be doing it is a really great way to push me to get through all of these goals. Now let's talk about diet. So we'll bring some bullets down here. Okay, foods to avoid. So a list of foods to avoid. Part of when I said like going into the kitchen and grabbing a snack midday, well, if I don't have those, you know, Doritos and Cheetos and cookies and all of those, I'm not going to want to buy them. I mean, I'm not going to want to eat them if they're not in my kitchen. Also foods to consume. When I was growing up, my mom always had it out like carrots and um, red and yellow peppers with some ranch. So like healthy snacks always around so that we were reaching for the healthy ones because they were visible and in sight. So if I spend time purchasing those, that will be what I go to get when I am craving a snack. Um, what is next? Okay, 80 ounces of water per day. I'm going to look for recipe blogs list of meals I love. So after I learn some recipes, I'll make a list of meals that I absolutely love. So one of my healthy go-to meals, I love chicken and I love vegetables. So making a healthy salad, but one that's good, like has some hard boiled egg in it for a little bit of protein, some chicken, um, a really good dressing, things like that, so that I'm getting all of my nutrients in. I'm not just eating like a rabbit, but I'm also enjoying the food that I eat. And the other thing with lists of meals I love is I like to replace certain items with a 
healthier version. So for example, I live in New Jersey. I'm a Jersey girl at heart and I love pizza. I could order pizza and eat probably the entire thing. One of the things that I started doing is what do I love about pizza? I love the dough, I mean the bread, the cheese, the pepperoni, and the sauce. So you can still have these things. I'm not talking about taking them out of my diet, but I will make an English muffin pizza. So it's a small little English muffin like this big. And then I satisfy that craving without eating the entire pizza. And it's still something I enjoy and a little bit of indulgence without it being too tough. And then restaurant meals. So I think when it comes to eating healthy, one of the challenges can be when you go to a restaurant. So here's a couple of tricks in case this is <laughs> your goal too. We're getting a little off base here, but hopefully it's helping. One of the tricks that I like is when you go to a restaurant with others, try to order first if you can, because you might have an idea. You might look and say, oh, we've got this, you know, really healthy chicken or this dish or something. And then as you start to hear everyone order their pasta or their fajitas or something, it sounds so good and you can't get your salad anymore or your healthy dish. If you order first, you're done. You've got it out. <laughs> Another trick that my grandmother used to do is she would order what she wanted. And as soon as it came, she would cut half of it. She would cut it in half and ask the server for a takeout container because oftentimes the restaurant size portions are more than what we need. And if it was all on her plate, she would eat it. And she would ask and to take half of it home immediately so that there was only a little bit, only half of it there left to eat. So now we have a very long set of a mind map. Let's talk about a monthly calendar. So I just dated this for August for this example. So this month's goal, we are going to get started. And this month's goals, what's great is that there are two sets here. So you could do a set of personal goals. You could do a set of health related ones. Also, when it comes down to breaking down a goal, your entire life is not going to be this goal, right? You still have to work and maybe take care of kids and socialize and rest and enjoy your life. So if I were to take everything from this mind map and put it right in here, it would be too much. So we are going to start out small for the month of August, my goals are going to be, let's put them over here, exercise basket and aim for three days per week. Find playlist I love. Now, the other option or something else to consider is when you're looking at your monthly calendar and it is all planned out. It's not just dates and you know what things look like. You can use a marker or stickers just to color code and actually make the plan. So just like you would make a plan for a doctor's appointment or you know when a kid might have a party or a play date, or something like that. Making a plan to incorporate a goal is really good. So I love the idea of starting out on a Monday exercising. So I'm going to put this here on Mondays so that when I'm looking at my planner for the month, to set it up for the week. I know, okay, Monday morning, I'm going to wake up early. 45 minutes should be fine. 30 minutes to exercise, 15 minute shower before starting work because again, I work from home. So I don't need to like fully get ready and things like that. But just putting that in the planner and knowing that this green is exercise related. And then let's also do it on Wednesday and Friday. This gives my body a day to rest. This is a way to glance at your planner and know that when you see this color, it is set up for the goal. The other thing you wanna think about as you're setting the goals are the bigger ones. So sign up for a 5K. May as well do that so that it's there and I know. So we are going to, let's make like a fun big note right here because that could be like not a scary step, but that's the big one, right? Once you sign up for it, that's the commitment. So I'm just gonna draw a big box right there and we will write sign up for five. Okay, and then these are the days that I will incorporate the exercise program. Um, we didn't talk about health. So health things that we can do is, let's put two bullets, not health, food, bookmark, recipe, blogs, and clean out pantry. Really just getting those foods that are unhealthy that I don't wanna reach for out of my kitchen. All right, let's now look at a weekly page. So I have my bookmark over here. And if we were setting this up for the first week of August, let's just date that. Okay, so this week's main goal, kick off health goals. And then we are going to 
make it fun. And again, we're using this color green, green healthy. I think I also use green often for budgeting, but knowing that when you see the green in your planner, that is always going to be the health related goal. So if I look at the habits and skills section, the first one I'm going to do is the um, working out. So we'll put that for the three days. I kind of want to do more because I'd really like to fill in Sunday, but I spoke about starting out slow, not overwhelming yourself. And this one is going to be for water. And then, and now the rest are available for any other habits or skills you want to incorporate, like reading or talking to a relative. So this is going to be exercise. This one is going to be 80 ounces of water. And this is going to be, I'm going to call it healthy snacking, which means reaching for something healthy instead of the cookies and the chips and the unhealthy things that I want to do. I actually want to include one more. So I'm not, I don't know about you, but I'm not great about breakfast. And incorporating a smoothie into my daily routine is really great because I can do protein powder and fruits and even some spinach to have some vegetable in there and chia seeds and things like that. So it's a good way to put something in my body to nourish it, but also daily smoothie to not make me as hungry around two, like three o'clock is typically usually around 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. are the times that I'm wandering into my kitchen and grabbing snacks by the handful. So the habit tracker is a great place to put in the goals. And then over here in the daily plans, we are going to incorporate this. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 30 min exercise. Similar to when I talk about budgeting, if you haven't watched our budgeting videos, make sure you check them out. I say that when you are budgeting and trying to incorporate savings, put the money aside for savings before you spend it. Save, spend what is left after saving. Don't save what is left after spending. If there's something you want to incorporate into your life, like exercise or any other goal that you're working towards, put it in your planner before anything else is in your planner. Don't wait until the end of the day and look at it and say, oh, now I have to put this, now I have to find space to do this. So you could also use this section over here with the dot grid to kind of do a mind map. I also really like the idea of using this to journal about it at the end of the week. If you have this space and you're not sure what to use it for, we could do something like one thoughts. Another thing that I love to be able to do is let's pull out this page in the back because again, there are so many pages and we can make this a little bit of a focus section. So my journey to be healthier, not a period, we're going to do an exclamation point. And you can break this down by journaling. You could also use this as a way to plan out or list things. So um, again, you could journal or we could do like food blogs. I love and then just leave this as open space to put them in so you always have those to reference. Another idea could be replacement meals. So like I said, pizza can be replaced with English muffin pizza. I love Chinese food. And even though it's not always a direct replacement, sometimes the flavor can be. So let's write Chinese takeout. That's what I'm looking to replace. Can be replaced by homemade stir fry, getting the really good vegetables in and focusing on the vegetables with a little bit of protein. And also, of course, this way you can control the amount of sauce and sodium intake and all of that. We're on a little crooked up here. So here are just, those are just some ideas on taking a big goal and how you can incorporate it into this planner in a lot of different ways, whether it's the mind map, whether it's these blank pages in the back, the monthly spread or your weekly spread and your habit tracker. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. You can shop all of our planners over at cleverfoxplanner.com. Let us know in the comments what goal you are working towards. And thank you so much for watching. If you are not already subscribed, please do subscribe to our channel and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And then go ahead and take a moment to like this video. Thank you again for being here and we will see you soon.